Don, one. You answered half my question in talking about more than one actual amendment. Uh, I, I, I hope I hope we can sit down soon and start uh, writing that out. But why why stop with just corporate money? Why not take all money out of democracy? Well, well, actually, that's a good point. We actually think that uh, what we'd like to propose is fully, completely, publicly funded elections for all elections. Get all uh, private money out of elections. So, yes, you, I agree with you on that, Don. Number two. Yes, ma'am. Uh, well, I just wanted to make a comment. I got excited when you said that the Constitution was the codification of the social contract because the idea had floated into my head that it was time to renegotiate the social contract. Right? So I just wanted to spit it out there. Renegotiate the social contract. I so. love it. <laughs> I love, yeah, you know what? I love that frame. Let me tell you something. I'm going to give her credit right now because I won't tomorrow night. <laughs> I say we call to renegotiate the social contract because I'll tell you something. All of these clever little things you've heard me say tonight, none of those were my ideas. So, I love it. Renegotiate the social contract. Number three. Hi, my name's Andy. I just want to say a couple of things before I take out, out of here. Um, I wanted to respond to both your statement and your statement about uh, why we should choose to pursue this route. Uh, I, I've been having a lot of these discussions on my radio show about this very subject. Uh, with other people and I tend to get the same sorts of responses and one of the things that is coalesced in my mind is that <clears throat> while a single amendment would obviously not solve the entire problem it would build an ideological foundation which is very effective and to show you a, a very effective parallel is that I think corporate personhood represents uh, on the side of corporate power what collective bargaining rights represent on the side of union power it is a doctrine that allows a group of people to come together and be formed as a single entity and be represented as a single entity. And I think corporate America has been very effective in going after collective bargaining mm -hmm. and unions in general. And I think we need to fight back by going undermining their legal right, right on. to come together and form uh, you know, a single entity and be represented as a single person. So I think that that's why it's such an effective tool. Two, I'm a socialist, so I read Marx, and I, 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 I take great creed, and I think he was a brilliant thinker, and one of the things that he, his, his dialect that he always uses is that <clears throat> just because your enemy has a weapon doesn't mean you should just throw it away, but that you should always think about how you can divide your enemy the same way that the property class divides us, and if they have a powerful weapon in this constitution, this social construct, and it works so effectively, let's think about ways how we can turn it around on them. So, so here, Andrew, I've been in email contact with you. Yeah, that'd be Andrew, me. so uh, next time in 2012, Kingwood, yes? Yes. Kingwood and, College. Yes, Kingwood College. And um, I am going to leave here shortly because I'm going to go to one of the General Assembly meetings for our local Occupy Houston. Those are every day at 1 and 7 in Market Square. 12 and 7. 12 and you guys well, changed it to 12. It was, it was number one. <laughs> okay, well, I go to the 7 o'clock one, so. <laughs> What's your radio show? Uh, I do a radio show on Coffee Party called Politics Done Right. Um, it's a political podcast and online radio show. Um, and I do that with the Keenwood Area Democrats. So it's all about building coalitions, right? But I just wanted to say that if you're worried about the movement being co-opted or something like that, you get involved, you know, go out to right. the GA, we rule by consensus, right? As long as there's lots of people here there who think like us, they can't co-opt that movement. So go out and, and support your local Occupy movement wherever you are. Bravo, Andrew. All right, thank you, Andrew. Thank you very much. So when I come back in 2012, you're going to get me in Kingway College? I, I could have got you there this week, but it's just there was so much back and forth. It's all, no, it's all good. But it's already set up. Yeah, it's yeah, already right set up. up. So we'll definitely do that. Uh, number four. I think that was me. Okay. Yes. Yes, sir. Well, I'm saying and something that you also have mentioned, that is it's coming together in a sense of unity that transcends these descriptors that we give for parties and people and personhood. Who are you as a person? To transcend that and become a family, a human family that connects on the basis of what you suggested of human rights, all children being fed, nutrition, schooling, equal opportunity and what you know we can do that we have enough resources obviously we know that there's more than enough the only issue that is in the way is greed there's never enough if there is greed present in your group 
And in your life, in your personal life, if you live by that concept and that construct, you too will limit yourself and become the sort of a guardian of your possessions. And I think we have to give, give that up. That's part of this, what I suggest, it, I see is, is a coming together that's exciting. It's like the one with Tunisia that seemed to start something over there in, in, uh, in the Middle East. Tunisia, you know, then Libya. But corporations are a way to, dis to detach yourself from your res personal responsibility, obviously. Who in the corporation is being responsible for the damage and the harms that the corporation has committed? No one that I know is coming up and saying, I'll be responsible for my corporation. No, it's a, it's a way of, I think, having the power without having the responsibility and accountability. And, that, and that's what's that's what's so evil about it. It truly, I think, is evil. And, and that's a funny word to use in this sense, but it's a judgment call about what kind of person you are. And well, corporations it, are lousy people. I do think it's kind of interesting that uh, there's a great film that uh, actually a friend of mine, uh, Mark Akbar, made called The Corporation. Oh, yeah. uh, and he actually says, if a corporation is a person, what kind of person is it? And he uses psychological uh, diagnostic tool to answer the question. A psychopath. <laughs> I, just, I, just, I just think it's kind of interesting. So uh, you were five, sir, is that right? So who's number four. six? Oh, you were four? I was named yeah. four. Andrew, you were four. Five. Five. Three. Oh, three, four, five. <laughs> Who's five? Well, we got the number five. Oh, I thought it was six. I thought you were five. Okay, well, maybe I'm five. Anyway, uh, I only ask, ask this because I've been in most of the Occupy <clears throat> Houston meetings, and uh, I don't want to sidetrack this, but the top, the, a lot of people have come up saying, end the Fed. And I don't really want to deal with this issue right now if it's kind of divisive, but you, since you brought it up also, could you please ex briefly explain the rationale for why the Fed exists in the first place and why we should abolish it? Sure. The Fed exists because the, the ruling elite want to actually create a private banking system to control the U.S. money supply. That's the short answer. And the reason that we should abolish it is because if you can actually can control the money supply, you can actually control most of the institutions of not just a capitalist society, but any society. I mean, money is the vehicle by which uh, uh, transactions are facilitated. So. Like can, being able to actually control the money supply is a very powerful thing. Now, I think it would really, like, so that's my short answer. And there's a rich conversation that we could have around what it would look like to actually have a truly democratic money supply. Uh, but that's probably not, you know, yeah. I mean, and I'll have it individually. I don't want to get off. Yeah, yeah. But, but so that's my short answer to the, both those questions. Okay. Was there a six? I would suggest while well, you six figure six, you might want to use the word. Commodity, labor is a commodity for the corporations. You didn't mention that. I okay. Think, I so, think commodity is a good word. Yeah, well, commodity is a good word, but I would actually tell you labor is not a commodity because the, there is a difference here. Because like at the end of the day, mo there's only one thing that creates wealth. Tell us what one thing creates wealth, Andrew. Labor. Labor creates wealth. Right. I knew that he would get the pop quiz. <laughs> That's right. Only labor can create wealth. And even a corporatist, actually, that studies and understands economics will acknowledge that. And so... I, and I accept that, except the labor is being treated as a commodity. That I would agree with. It is being treated as a commodity, but it is not one. Okay. So, so this is, I think that's important, Mike. Like, like, language is important. Okay. So it's true. It's being treated as a commodity, and it's not. My, labor is noble. My other commodity, my other... <laughs> is the United States has the best government and court system money can buy and they're going to do whatever is necessary to keep it that way subject to the revolution which I will sorry to say won't be living long enough to meet it but if it starts tomorrow count me in. Well you're in. Right, on that note, thank you again to Lee and Arvo for opening up your space.